Please don't go, I need you so, I'm begging seal to play. Please don't go. Today I'm here with Ms. Del Forty, and we are here for a conversation with Steve. Ms. Del, <clears throat> excuse me, a little frog in my throat. Ms. Del is actually uh, from North Dakota and lives in the same town I do. So we know each other personally, which is kind of rare in these days when I know so many people online from all around the world. So well, let me check and see if Steve is here. And he says that he is. So Steve, you got anything to say to start us off? Steve says, he is a good vibration on money on earth. Whenever he gets a chance to communicate through this mechanism of the uh, open communication between here and there because it reminds him of what it's like to live in the earth vibration and he misses it because it's a very, very different way of perceiving. Is it perceiving, Steve? Perceiving life. When you're here, it's so easy. It's like you just roll over and Take a nap when you want to, and you can fly among the stars if you want to. You can do anything you want. And if you don't like what you're doing, you just say, I want to do something else, and away you go. So when you're on Earth, it's different. When you're on Earth, you have to take the ups and downs. You don't get to avoid them. So you say to yourself, well, fuck, this is tough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired of climbing up and down the hills and going through the valleys and the sloughs and everything else that gets in my way. And couldn't we just take the easy road? And the easy road when you're on earth looks like the road where you get to rise up high above the masses and Surround yourself with wealth and beautiful surroundings. Whether constructed by man or in nature, where you don't have to look upon the suffering of humanity. To the eyes of those on earth, this looks like the epitome of comfort and release from the constant struggle to survive in the earth vibration, which is the result of the fact that you can't snap your fingers and choose what you're going to do, where you're going to be, what you're going to look like, et cetera, et cetera. You have to take the ride because the ride is, the ride is what? The ride is all you get to do. You don't get to skip over it. You don't get to say, well, this ride is a little bit too tough for me. Can you please just wipe out the last six months of my experience and put me on a happier carnival ride? And God says, 
Forget it, buddy. You asked to go on this ride, and I went through all the work to give you this ride. Now take it, damn it. Don't complain. Mm -hmm. So what do you do when you're on a ride that doesn't feel so hot? Well, when you're ready to get on a different ride, you actually have the ability to do so. You're not stuck. So I was kind of giving you the rundown from the perspective of most people on earth, that when you're on a ride, you're stuck on it until it's over. And you can scream and holler and make a fuss, but the only way out is to either come out the other side of the ride or to allow yourself, I'm sorry, to allow your energy to leave the earth vibration and return to heavenly realms, which you can do if you choose. However, it's kind of a, it's kind of a what? Deceptive out, because the truth is, once you come back into the earth vibration, you're going to have to take the ride if you haven't resolved the issues that put you on that ride. And it's very, very difficult to resolve the issues that put you on that ride when you're in heaven because you're not on the ride. How do you figure it out if you're not on the ride? If all you have to do is snap your fingers and away you go to some happy place where you can enjoy yourself however you prefer. So most people go back into the earth vibration and find themselves on the ride that they started God knows when. Because to tell the truth, from life to lifetime, lifetime to lifetime, you are continuing the same ride that may have been started centuries or even eons ago. So with that in mind, what would you like to know, Estelle? Mm -hmm. So we had been talking about being in states of boredom me and stephanie were talking about that just a minute ago um and that's kind of where i'm finding myself feeling restless um i mean i'm staying busy it's not like i i'm not doing actively physically doing things it's just almost like a different state of boredom and i know i should embrace that and just you know be okay with how peaceful things are right now and maybe part of me somewhere is anticipating something coming. I do feel that too. Um, but I have this brain that wants to figure out what that is. You know, and I can't just be in a space of like peacefulness and calm. I can at times, I'm not saying this is consistently like restless and uncomfortable or anything. Um, just the last few days, just feeling bouts of like that part of my brain trying to figure out what's coming next. And maybe that's a survival thing. I'm not sure. But when I was trying to think of some questions for you today, Steve, I kept, my mind kept going to, of course, wanting answers about stuff, right? But trying to understand, is there indeed some sort of divine intervention that exists? Does something bigger than us ever intervene on our, on our journeys in any sort of way? Like, you know, when people talk about miracles, and I've had some things happen in my life that I swear was some sort of divine intervention, life-saving stuff, right? Um, and I guess I'm just in a space where I'm questioning a lot of things like, was that real? Is that something that can actually happen? Are miracles real? When we pray, who is listening to us? Who hears us? Are they answered? And if so, by who? You know, like, it's a kind of a big question, I guess, but maybe it's not called divine intervention there. So if you have any, anything you can offer in that regard, I'm totally open to trying to understand that better. Ms. Still, everything you said is so pertinent to 
the message I want to convey from here. If I were you, I would say to myself, well, this is part of the ride. However, who's controlling the ride? Is it some force outside of me? Or is it somebody, some, I'm sorry, or is it access to something inside me? Am I the one that gets to pull the lever that's going to change this story? Or do I have to sit here and wait for someone else to do it? So the scenario I gave you just a few minutes ago was the typical version. You're stuck. Mm -hmm. You got to take the ride, right? right? However, you've brought up a very, very good point because the question of divine intervention is important. If there is divine intervention and somebody else is controlling the ride, then it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. That there could be someone who's controlling the ride. And if you beg and plead enough, they'll say, okay, mm -hmm. all right, <laughs> I'll do something to make you feel better. I'll create right. a miracle and take mm -hmm. you off the ride, even though everybody else has to take it. You can get off. <laughs> that would be the typical understanding if you accept that the ride is being controlled by an operator that is external to your own energy and not part of you. So I'm going to suggest that this is completely asinine because the control is within you. So when you're on the ride and you say to yourself, well, this sucks. How am I ever going to get off this fucking ride? Because I'm tired of sitting here, not knowing who I am, not knowing what I am, not knowing what's coming next, bored out of my fucking mind and wondering if all this is Who's going to come save me? Well, ask yourself. Who wants to save somebody like that? <clears throat> the point. The problem is here that you don't understand the nature of God energy. God energy is... The same energy that flows through you and through everyone. And if you say to God, I can't stand this fucking ride. Please let me off. He'll repeat back to you. I can't stand this fucking ride. Let me off. And you'll say, oh, that sounds like a good game to play. <laughs> so, sounds like you got it covered. Keep playing. <laughs> and so you keep playing, saying, God, please get me off this fucking ride. And God keeps saying, sounds good to me. Just keep riding it and saying, get me off this fucking ride. Mm -hmm. Because God is very literal. And the picture you paint <clears throat> in your mind is the one God sees. Mm. Okay. So do you understand this story? I do, yeah. Mm -hmm. You and God are so united in your energetic confluence that you are the one who tells God energy what to do. So let's say that you said, 
What a great ride, God. <laughs> I feel like shit, but you know what? It's nice to feel like shit once in a while. Mm. However, I've already felt like shit for a while. So I got the message. I get what it feels like to feel like shit. Now I'm ready for something new. So instead of yelling at you and telling you to get me off this fucking ride, <laughs> I'm going to say to you, God, you are the best. Mm. Thank you for this wonderful ride. Right. Now I know what it's like to feel like shit. <laughs> and I don't really want to keep doing it because I already get it. So I'm ready to move on, God. And... Here's what I would like. I'd like to have a ride that takes me to new vistas. I'd like to see life from a different point of view because I've already seen it from this point of view. Mm. And so I'm going to open my mind to possibilities. I'm going to consider the possibility that there's something out there for me that will bring me to a state of such happiness that I am no longer begging you to take me off the ride because it's like being on a train going through new scenery. And I'm going, wow, look at that. Wow, look at that. Wow, look at that. And in fact, you could never change your material circumstances and still change the ride. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. It so just depends. Like, so it's kind of like being co-creating with God, essentially, and being part of the solution instead of focusing on focus on where you want to be instead of where you don't want to be anymore and speak that right absolutely am i following absolutely, absolutely. Okay. so it's where your focus is so mm -hmm. if your focus is upon how miserable you are because of da 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 Somebody outside of you is causing a lot of misery. Change your focus. Right. Like being on a train and the person next to you is yattering on and on and you're tired of listening to them. So focus your attention on the scenery outside of you and go, wow, that's cool. Wow, yeah. that's cool. Wow, that's cool. And after mm -hmm. a while, that person that's sitting next to you yattering at you gets bored because they need somebody who will listen to them and commiserate with them and be a good vibration on hatred and whatever for everybody else. So they'll get up and go find another seatmate who will listen to them and commiserate with them about what a horrible ride it is. Mm -hmm. You, in the meantime, are left to enjoy the scenery in peace. Mm. You understand interesting this? That he, yeah, it's interesting you use that analogy, Steve, because that's one of the things that I would like to do is get on a train. I've never been on a train. I've never traveled a long distance on a train. And that's what I would do. I'd be so mesmer. Like, I just know myself. I know it, I'd be all about the scenery and just even now I drive an hour out of town. If I'm on a road I've never been on, I'm excited because I'm on a road I've never been on. <laughs> you know, like, I love that sort of thing. So very interesting that you use that analogy. Thank you for that. So much to see, so much to do, so little time. Mm -hmm. So I am a good vibration on taking a train trip. So I think you should take a train trip with Steph. And mm -hmm. the two of you should go to the West Coast and mm -hmm. sell books. Are you a good vibration on doing that? Yeah, I'd love that. Sounds amazing, for sure. So, next time you talk to God, say, God, you're the best <laughs> in the West. 
And I have to confess <laughs> that I have felt less than excited about my life. And I will not be a bad vibration on complaining because I got a better plan. How about we jump on a train and we go out west, you and me, God, and we work on selling some books that will help people understand this story. How they too can be a good vibration on change, finding out what it is that excites them, and allowing you to see what it is that excites them. Because the more we think it, the more we say it, the more we believe it. Mm -hmm. Belief is the key here. Right. Because when you articulate what it is you want to do, then the heavens open up. Their treasure box, and they say, oh, what do we have in here that we can give to Ms. Dill that will help her to access a good vibration on taking a train ride. Mm -hmm. And you say, cool. Thank you, God. And thank you for opening your treasure ships to me. Because I never really realized you had a treasure chest that you could open without me having to beg and plead and complain and get down on my knees and beg you to take pity on me. I never realized that the way to open the treasure chest was to tell you how wonderful you are. Mm -hmm. Because when I tell you how wonderful you are, you feel good. And you say, well, thanks, Miss Hill. I like you too. <laughs> and let's have fun. Last thing I want is a companion who's always complaining and begging me to change the ride. It's kind of like little kids in the back seat. Are we mm. there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> yeah. And you're saying well, to them, just look out the window and enjoy the scenery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they are clueless. Mm. They just want to fight with their sibling <laughs> in the back seat. Right. Right. So I just want to get all, to the finish line. Yeah. So we're all the, on earth, kind of like the kids in the back seat, fighting, going, are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> I'm hungry. I have to go potty. Yeah. Yeah. So get in the driver's seat. And you decide when you stop for food or drink or to right. go potty. <laughs> and along the way, you say to yourself, wow, wow, look at that. Wow, look at that. Wow, look at that. God, look at all this stuff that I never saw before. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking about here is not necessarily that you are looking out the window of the train at magnificent sights where... Everyone is standing around taking photographs, going, wow, look at that. Wow, look at that. Mm -hmm. And National Geographic is sending out their photographers and reporters. It is more about just seeing the little stuff all around you, the miracles all around you. When you see the miracles all around you, then you will begin to understand that you don't have to beg God for a miracle because everything is a miracle. Mm. I love that. Yeah. Each 
blade of grass is a miracle. Mm -hmm. The problem is that you're jaded. Mm -hmm. And when you're jaded, you're about the same color as the grass. Because you're jealous of God. Mm -hmm. You're like saying like, look what God did. He made all this grass. And if he can do it, why can't I? Why can't I create something so amazing that everybody goes, oh, look at what you did. You're even better than God. <laughs> so it's not uncommon for people on earth to be in competition with God. Mm. So give up the fight. You won't win it. Mm -hmm. That's like chasing your tail mm -hmm. and trying to win the game. Right. You can't win that game. You can't be better than God because God is a part of you. And God will resonate at the same vibration you resonate. Mm -hmm. Because how else would he reach you? Right. If God is lofty in heaven and you're vibrating down in the gutter, how would God find you? Unless he took his energy to the gutter. The gutter. Yeah. So God is always with you. And you are always with God. However, the ideas, the idea that has been fed to humanity forever, it seems. And I can't remember a time when there actually was a better understanding of this in the earth vibration that God is somehow lofty and unreachable and we mm. are lowly. Mm. And part of the problem is that when we entered <clears throat> into this experience on earth, we gradually lost our sense of balance and understanding. We began to believe that we were lesser than the world we see and feel because we began to believe that we were bodies. And if you were to stand next to the tallest tree in California, you would say to yourself, look how small I am. <laughs> and look how tall that tree is. It must be better than me because it's bigger. Mm. And what you forget is that the tree exists in you. Mm. Even if you were to accept the idea that has been perpetrated under the illusory guise of science that the tree exists outside you because you're a body, even they acknowledge that the fact you can see the tree is the result of it being flashed on a little screen in your mind, so to speak. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That somehow, through some miracle that they cannot really explain, they can, no more than they can explain why, if you have the impulse to pick up a pencil across the room, you can get up and walk across the room without even thinking about it. All you're thinking about is the pencil. Mm -hmm. Not walking across the room, right? Right. In... Their illusion, which is part of the earth illusion, and what makes it spin, is the idea that you are a body and that the tree is a body. And though each of you is made of atoms of energy, you exist separate from each other. Mm. This is the foolishness that inspires so much 
greed, and so much destruction. For if you, this thinking, feeling, being, is the body, and the tree is just something, not you, no problem cutting it down, right? Mm. And mm. from there, if you are a body, and the person next to you is a body, you really can't be the same because you are you and they are they. And therefore, until you begin to understand the reality of connection, you can say to yourself, well, they're not me. And therefore, they're not worth worrying about. Mm-hmm. And so I can cut them down too. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're talking about like reverence, like having reverence for all living beings, not just humans, but trees, you know, the earth, all living beings, right? In a sense, like having reverence for all things. Reverence is a natural attribute of the human experience when it comes into trust on God energy because everything is filled with God energy and Mm -hmm. there is nothing else in the world that can inspire reverence except to understand that everything you see, everything you do, everything you hear is through the good graces of God energy. And therefore, everything you see, hear, feel, think, and do is God energy working through you. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as you hold reverence for others, for the tree, for the other bodies in the world, Hold reverence for your own body. Mm-hmm. And eventually that will translate to reverence for life itself. Because we all are alive. And that's the most important thing of all to remember is that you're here, you're alive. And I don't mean simply that you're here in the earth vibration. You hear me talk, right? Yep. Even if it's Through a translator, you can hear my words. And it would be no different if you were listening to a video or talking to someone on the phone. Mm -hmm. You can hear a voice. And you can trust that it is talking to you. Correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. You can trust that I am here talking to you. Yes. And so I exist Mm -hmm. just as you do. Mm -hmm. And I will continue to exist. And so will you. And together, we have the ability to be a good vibration on money on earth. In other words, we have the ability to take our understanding of the nature of reality, which is to trust on God energy and transform the world that we experience, whether it's in your world, your world or my world, it doesn't matter because all worlds in the end are united uh, through the heart back to the source uh, energy, which is what most people think of as God. God is the creator. However, every one of us is an aspect of the creator. And therefore, we are all part of God energy. And through the great magnificence of God's mercy, each one of us was given the ability to create like the Father and to be 
an expression of his love. And so when you express the idea that you are a good vibration on imagination and that therefore you can take your energy into new realms through the imagination and God says yippee I was getting kind of bored <laughs> and that's the way it is you get it mm -hmm. yeah I do have a very active imagination and that's what you know I venture to that place lots of places all the time and it does feel really good you started out this conversation by saying you're bored. <laughs> right. You get it? Yep. Mm -hmm. It all goes around the circle. You're bored, God's bored. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It seems so simple now that I'm hearing it, you know? It's like when you're stuck in it, you're actually the, you're the reason you're stuck in it, you know, because use your imagination a little bit almost. It's almost, it's almost comical to me now that we're talking through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Trust on your ability to transform any experience mm -hmm. into something wonderful with imagination. Mm -hmm. Children do it all the time. Right. So if you're sitting somewhere and you're bored, your imagination could easily take you someplace else, right? Yep. yep. And yep. in doing so, you are transforming the ride. Mm -hmm. Steve says he's going to give you an example of transforming the ride. Accessing his memory of a memorable <laughs> adventure with Steph during the period of time when he was still accessing a good vibration on earth and he was still able to feel human emotion as he wandered the world looking for salvation. Eventually, he came across Steph, and the two of them had a good time together. And one day, she decided to walk to the store in the middle of winter, and it had stormed, so there were no cars on the street. And so she decided to walk up to the store, which was open, only about four or five blocks away. So she made it there okay, even though it was cold. And on the way home, she had a couple of bags of groceries. And suddenly she was walking into the wind. And there was no place to walk that was not two feet deep, at least, in snow. And so she's plowing through the snow and the wind is in her face. And if you are familiar with North Dakota in the winter, you know that it can be very bitter cold. And that being out in a snowstorm or the aftermath even, or the beginning of a snowstorm can be lethal, even in the course of a half mile or less, depending upon how cold it is. So Steph was plowing along trying to see her way forward through the blowing snow. And she said to herself, well, here I am, an Arctic explorer, and I am trying to reach the North Pole. And so we went on an adventure toward the North Pole between the store and her house. Mm. And when we got back home and got warm, we said to ourselves, what an adventure that was. Wasn't that fun? It was all in the imagination, you might say, but 
because of our link telepathically, we were able to share the adventure. And it was one of the most fun times I ever had. Because even though it was very, very challenging, it was rewarding. Why would anyone want to plow through snow and cold to reach the North Pole? Ask yourself. And yet people did, right? Mm -hmm. And when you choose to take your energy into an experience like that, you begin to understand something. You begin to understand what would make somebody choose such an adventure. Because the rewards are great. The reward when you are finally sitting in a warm place, and I don't care if you die along the way, you're still going to end up in a warm place. <laughs> I'm not talking about hell. Um, <laughs> put your feet up and tell the story. And so we got a little taste of that just from the adventure. It doesn't mean that someday we'll have to trek to the North Pole. It just means that we now have a little bit of affinity with the people who did so. Mm. So even though you're in the earth vibration and you can't snap your fingers as we can, and suddenly everything around you changes, you can use your imagination to experience life in a little different vibration than the one you're in. Mm. If you're in a classroom and you're bored, you can use your imagination to access a different vibration than boredom. Mm -hmm. Perhaps your imagination will take you to a deserted island where you're sitting and waiting to be rescued. And it's hot there and you can't find any food unless you can pick it off the rocks or under the rocks or manage to catch a fish. And you sit there and you wait and you wait and you wait. And while you wait, you are a good vibration on boredom. So even though in both cases you're bored, in one case, you are stuck in the classroom. In the other case, you're on a grand adventure. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. So don't limit yourself. Why limit yourself? Right. And when you go on a grand adventure in your imagination, God's paying attention. Mm. He says, boy, that was fun. Mm. Thank you for showing me that picture. Right. Because I was getting pretty bored in that classroom, too. Mm. And we both got to go on that adventure because I know you. I know mm. what you're thinking. And I'm right beside you all the time. So I was with you on that desert island. I will remember that adventure. And I will thank you for not boring me by sitting there going, oh, God, this is so boring. Oh, God, this is so boring. Oh, I wish I could, you know, just get up and walk out. Oh, this is so boring. Mm -hmm. Because that would be very boring for me. Right. Find the vibration that works for you. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about how to access a good vibration on a new ride. So when we were walking through the snowstorm, it wasn't to tell God that we really wanted to trek to the North Pole. It was just to say, we're having fun playing this game, right? Mm -hmm. And when you can begin to realize that it's the same thing in your life every day, that you're playing a game that you chose to enter into. Mm -hmm. This is the game of life. You chose to be bored. And... In your boredom, 
you say to yourself, well, this sucks. I want to do something else. If you never said, this sucks, I want to do something else, you might as well be dead, right? Right. Because if you're dead, and I mean really dead, not alive like I am, you were really dead and gone, there wouldn't be any change. Just keep doing the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so the vibration of change is synonymous with life. Change is life. So even if you're not a good vibration on changing the ride through a good vibration on imagination, you're still going to experience change because here's the secret. You're always imagining it. Mm. So when you're sitting there, whatever pictures are grabbing your attention, that's what you're experiencing, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to explain to you a little trick. And this is not something that's so hard to do. When you are sitting watching television and you were to ask yourself, what am I seeing? Say you're watching a well-known movie like Star Wars. Now, Mistel, if you're looking at the television screen, but our computer screen. What are you seeing? Images <clears throat> of outer space and spaceships and actors playing out a story, essentially. Very good. It's where your focus is. Now imagine the people who are producing those movie. When they're looking at the movie on their computer screen, where's their focus? <clears throat> in the details I suppose sure. not so much the story yeah you know how does it look how's the lighting how is right. you know the expression on that actor's face did they do a good right. job mm -hmm. is it convincing yeah is there anything in the background that got in by mistake that we don't want there right does it flow all kinds of questions now if you're stiff and you're looking at the computer screen or the television or movie screen, what do you see? If I'm staff looking at it? Mm -hmm. Well, it'd be the same thing I'd see if I was looking at it, wouldn't it? Except from her perspective? Not exactly. Okay. If she were looking at it, she sees the TV screen. She sees the wall behind it. She sees the pixels on the screen. She sees the coffee cup sitting on the counter beside the computer. Do you understand the difference? Right. Yeah, so her, movie, her, her movie is her reality. Mm. Mm -hmm. right. and your reality or your movie is your reality however you are immersed in the illusion of the movie on the screen and you have forgotten about the surroundings correct <laughs> right mm -hmm. and so you get lost in space as we call it to be lost in space is to lose your bearings. Mm. So even though we had a grand adventure on the way to the North Pole, never forgot that we were in North Dakota walking mm -hmm. through a snowstorm. Right. So it is quite possible to watch a movie and 
enjoy the movie from different perspectives, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have movies within the movie. So when you're watching Star Wars, you're watching a movie within the movie. Mm -hmm. But you've forgotten you're watching a movie within the movie. Right. And so when you're going through life, you're watching a movie. Mm -hmm. Only difference here is that you're the director. Mm -hmm. And what you're directing is not the incidences uh, that are in, of the reality that is unfolding around you. What you're directing is your reaction to it. Mm. Okay. Is it engaging? make you angry hmm. are you upset about anything when hmm. you begin to understand that your emotional response is under your direction you can hmm. begin to change the circumstances around you right. and you did because when you sat down to watch the movie to watch star wars you altered the ride you said well i want something entertaining right now so you sat down and during the period that you're watching the movie you're not feeling sad you're not feeling angry at somebody that caused you a problem mm -hmm. you're not resenting anyone you're absorbed in the movie mm -hmm. and you may feel anger or sadness or loneliness or have any kind of emotional response to the movie and hopefully the director of the movie says people will respond to this movie as we intend for them to respond with emotional access to good vibrations on money as portrayed in our movie. So when you're bored and you decide to pick up a book and read, you're changing the ride. Mm -hmm. When you are bored and you decide, I'm going to call up my friend, see if she wants to go to a movie with me or out to dinner with me, you're changing the ride. Mm -hmm. When you're bored and you say this job sucks, I'm going to get online, see if I can find another job. You're changing the movie. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're always changing it. Mm -hmm. When you say, I'm bored, this sucks. God help me. Please do something to fix <laughs> this problem. <coughs> you are gnashing your teeth and moaning while you keep the movie going. Right. Okay. Let's recap your thoughts on this. What do you think? <clears throat> well, it definitely got my got me out of my whole ton kind of tunnel vision I had going on about it, you know. And it, like I said, it was almost silly because it's like I, I almost kind of know this stuff, but I get sucked into it, you know? Yeah, at any given point, you're changing the movie. Any little move you make that's different than just sitting there being bored, not doing anything. And yeah, God energy works with you. Like, so to say I don't like something that's happening is just you're going to get more of that because that's what you're focusing on. Mm -hmm. Focus on the change you want to see in your life. And you normally, yeah, you see that happen too. So it's like I had, I get bouts of amnesia or something. I don't know. And it's not consistent. I, I'm definitely not in a place anymore where, and I haven't been for a few years now, where I've begged and pleaded to be saved, right? 
uh, it, it it doesn't get to that point right because i i have a broader understanding of how things work now like i but there was a time in my life where i was in that place but not so much now i just get restless and you know instead of just going within and, and tapping into what i already know i get uncomfortable with it not that it's been you know painful or anything by any means right I just needed that little bit of a jolt of, you know, I appreciate everything Steve said because it was right, right on target, right on target. So. so let's talk about divine intervention, which was your question. So we've all had experiences where we felt that there was some kind of divine intervention, right? Mm -hmm. In your experience, you have, correct? Yep. And in my experience, I did, and Steph's had plenty. And so. Divine intervention is part of the story, right? Mm -hmm. Around you. Right. It's part of the TV, the co coffee mm -hmm. cups sitting on the counter, right? Hmm. I never thought of it like that. It's still part of the story. Mm -hmm. And so how did it come about? Think about it. When did you have your divine intervention? What was the experience before the divine intervention? I was in a, probably the lowest place of my life when that happened. Yeah, yeah. hands down. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. tends to be when people have it. Right. Do you yeah. know why? Our soul's own knowing that things need to change and we're, we're I don't know. That's kind of why I'm asking, you know. You stopped fighting God. Hmm. Surrender, you stop yeah. saying, you stop saying, mm. I got this figured out, God. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I was like, I don't know. You know? Yeah. Yep. So as long as you think you've got it figured out, mm. God says, good for you. You got it figured out. Keep doing <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> I love you, Steve. Yeah. That makes total sense. So when you surrender to the will of God, and say, I ain't got it. God, I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> I'm fucked up. <laughs> God right. says, thank you, honey. Mm. You finally reached the point where you understand that I don't got it figured out either. <laughs> because we're creative. Yeah, we're co co-creating together, yeah. And so, as long as you had it figured out, I let you lead the way. <laughs> And now that you're admitting that you don't have it figured out, I better step in and help out. Mm. I'm yeah. not going to override your will. Right. Right. You have to surrender it mm -hmm. to my access to the love I hold for you and for mm. everyone. Mm. And I love you so much that I'm going to allow you to be the winner if you want to be the winner between us. <laughs> you can keep saying, I got it figured out, God. So please just mm -hmm. do it the way I tell you. Or you can say, I don't got it figured out, God. Mm. And I, I just, I give up. And then I say, okay, I love you so much that I'll pick you up and help you. Get a good mm. vibration on love for yourself, for others, and for God energy. Because when you give up, you allow yourself to return to your original state mm. of connection with me, which is love for yourself, for others, and for God energy. There will be a point when the darkness comes because. The darkness that you experience in the moment before the light bursts forth is the little bit of trust on death mm -hmm. and resurrection. Can you understand this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you die a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you come alive a little bit. Yes. Yeah. 
So don't fight the darkness. Okay. Fighting the darkness is like saying you are unwilling mm. to take the ride. Mm. And the ride, you see, is the ride of wonder at life. And how can you have wonder for life if you've never exper experienced what it is like to be dead? Mm. So it is in those moments of death, you might say, death to the ego mm. that I am born within you as a companion and not just being dragged along <laughs> mm -hmm. because you don't realize I've been with you all along. Mm. So I'm going to pause here so you can add your thoughts to this. I don't, it's just beautiful. You know, it makes sense. And I needed that. I can sit and try to make sense of things in my own head. And, and, and sometimes I can, but sometimes I get too caught up in things and I need a different perspective. I need somebody to just shed some light on it. <laughs> open the door a little bit like hey you can come out now stop <laughs> you know it's like I reach I, in and pull you out of your yeah, hole <laughs> I just go lock myself in a room for a while because I got caught up in just the things that you know not seeing the bigger picture like I said having tunnel vision and you know I'm still susceptible to that a lot I have a much broader understanding of things now than I ever have but I can still do that you know and so I couldn't have I couldn't have asked for a more beautiful explanation on things. Everything about it, it just touched my heart. So thank you. I really appreciate that. I needed that more than I realized I needed that, to be honest. So thank you. Do you have any other questions before we conclude? That was all I really had, and it covered a lot more than I anticipated it would. It's like he's hit, he's sitting here with me, knowing what I've been going through the lot. It was that was great. It was just. Thank you. There are no coincidences in God's story. <laughs> the synchronicity in this story, the one that you're involved in, and how it intersects with mine, and Steph's, and anyone else's who may hear this, is the story of love mm -hmm. as told by you and me, Steph, and to some extent by all those who watch this mm -hmm. and those who add to their own good energy on life eternal and love for themselves, for others, and for God energy. It is the story of coming home. And it is told in billions and billions of versions. But the essence of it is always the same. Mm. So thank you for being part of my story. Because mm -hmm. we all have our own story. And we all have the stories we create together. And you and I have been creating today a new dynamic. Because when you talk to me and I talk to you, then we are both altering the world around us just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And eventually, the world begins to open itself like a zipper is pulled open mm -hmm. and inside we see there is a new world one that was there all along but we just couldn't see it 
and the old skin falls away and the new vibrant world is exposed. And if it should grow old and weary, then there will be a new world ready to be revealed inside it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Still, for talking to me because you have no idea how much I anticipate and appreciate mm -hmm. the ability to be able to still communicate with those on earth. I haven't mm -hmm. forgotten you. I haven't said to myself, well, I'll just be a good vibration on heaven till I have to go back to earth in another body and not worry about the people I left behind. I care about you. And mm. if you will talk to me, I will talk to you. And together, we will help unzip the wrapper and expose a new world of peace and harmony. Be well, my dear, and we'll talk again. Thank you, Steve. All right, Ms. Still, thank you very much for great. participating. Thanks for asking me. It was great. I'm glad I did that. I've got, you know, this renewed energy all of a sudden. It's great. Thank you. And I had all words together. Up, yeah, I woke up this morning, looked at my phone, and a message from you was on there. So I don't know, divine intervention or what? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but well, God's the story, on. The story changes, you know, That's the story right. changed with that text message. And my day totally took a different you know, route today. So I'm happy about that. I feel good. Much needed. Thank you again, Steve.